Okay, so our presentation was basically playing pickup basketball at different places in New York and looking at the differences in the course, differences in the people there, differences in the skill level, and seeing basically the idea of it was behind was seeing how if we would be different people and players if we grew up in a different neighborhood playing at a different park. Because we played most of our pickup basketball either in gyms like the Dalton Gym or at parks like Central Park and Carl Scherz Park. Um, and that's a very different experience than different courses, what we learned. Um, our faculty advisor was Teddy Frischling, couldn't make it today, but we wanted, to, we wanted to give him a shout out. He was really helpful with everything. But yeah, so our first park, yeah, can, you, can, you, can you flip it? So our first park was Central Park. Um, the Great Lawns are one, a very famous place to play basketball, although the quality of players is normally pretty low, to be honest. One of the reasons why is that during the day, a lot of like schools bring their kids to the park. This is one of our coaches, Keith, who we're to St. David's, who's bringing a bunch of middle schoolers from St. David's to the, uh, to the park to play basketball, play around the great lawn. So what ends up happening is that there's always tons and tons of kids there, but in reality, they're not really that talented kids. So like, the quality of games isn't that good. Is it broken? Damn it, that's bad. <laughs> my computer. When my computer. When my computer broken. A uh, click. Click the thing on the bottom. Sorry. Right. Sorry. No. Hit play, baby. Oh. Click again. There we go. Okay. There you go. Yeah. That's another one of our coaching. Yeah. So so oh. when we got when we got there, there were kid there were kids from schools playing in the park, but there weren't yeah. actually like games going on. So we kind of ended up playing two on two. Here's another person we know playing pick up playing with his kids. That's a different school. Um, and yeah, we actually went back there a couple days ago. The game quality is a little better, but it's not really like the kind of thing you think about when you think about like inner city pick up basketball. It was really just kids kind of messing around playing. Um, yeah. Uh, and so maybe the best like court we went to, the cage on West Fourth Street. Uh, it's a very well known court. Uh, it's really small. Like NBA players play there a lot. Actually, the day. After we went, Brandon Jennings, who plays for the Wizards, he was at the court, and so there's a huge crowd. And so the cage is, it's a very small basketball court, and so that leads to a lot of like physical play. That's why it's called the cage. And so I'm bleeding there. <laughs> I got hit in the nose after a uh, nice defensive play by me. Uh, yeah, and so you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but like, the court is very small, but we were there for probably three hours, and uh, yeah, this is probably our best court that we played at, I'd say. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then something that you don't even capture in the photos we took, but it's all chain link fence, and if you on this side of this photo, there's a subway stop, and so as you're playing, people coming out of the subway, going to work, or doing their daily business, will stop by and actually watch your game. This is, we took this picture from that spot. So like in our last game we played, there's a bunch of people on the other side of the fence, but then there's also like, like probably up to like 80 people stop by. Yeah, there are a lot of people watching us. And like, one of us made a good move, and everyone would be like, oh my god, white boy has got game, whatever. <laughs> and, and, like, and that was pretty awesome. And that's something that, that's something that we've never felt like um, playing in Center Park in particular. Uh, in terms of the most storied basketball parks in New York City, Holcomb Rucker Park is definitely one of the, the most famous basketball pickup spots in, in probably the country. Um, Holcomb Rucker Park was founded in. It was created in about, I think, 1940 with um, this guy, Holcomb Rucker, who he saw problems in his community, so he thought that basketball would be one of the ways to fix it. And so he founded this, this tournament, the Rucker Tournament. And so every summer, they, have, they hold this tournament. And so all the proceeds and all the funds go into putting kids from the neighborhood through college and through school. So Holcomb Rucker, with, his, with this park, this park was um, it's more of a community center. And so unlike uh, maybe Central Park or um, out of the cage. This was more a place for people around the neighborhood to congregate and less of a spot to sort of maybe get a great pickup game going, even though there are some like NBA players play here all the time over the summer. Um, KD in one of the most one of the most impressive performances had about fifty points. Sixty six. Sixty six, sixty three points in this game. So the competition is also there at this park, but this park is more more based around the community activism and so top of the game. Oh, and these candles, this is for, um, there's a man who passed away who, he was a co-founder of the tournament, and so he passed away, I think, probably two weeks ago. Um, and so, 
people around the neighborhood. While we were there, there were actually people um, bringing candles and vigils to the to Rucker Park to sort of remember him and remember what he did for the community. So it's a good part. Um, <coughs> the, the furthest we ventured was to Brooklyn Bridge Park. Um, this was kind of, it was by far kind of the prettiest park and it had the most courts uh, of any place we went. And it was kind of, it was kind of a, interesting thing to see because it was the only place we went that had multiple courts that we actually played on um, and so on each court there's kind of a like different kind of game going on on one court it was almost like a camp type thing where kids were wearing pennies and like it was like a instructional type um, scrimmage um, and then on the nearest court to that there's kind of a very very serious game going on and then we picked the third court and when we first got there it kind of uh, they were playing a half court game and there were kind of a lot of people around and there's kind of large community center, there's a roller rink, there's uh, different piers where different things have happened. Um, and we kind of saw as we were playing that uh, people would kind of just stop by the park and just kind of play, even if they weren't even wearing the correct clothing or things like that. Like two of the kids we were playing with were wearing jeans um, as we were playing with them. And also I would say probably had like the largest kind of diversity in terms of ethnicities, in terms of kind of ages of uh, anywhere we went. Um, like as you can see there, we didn't get that many pictures of us playing because we were kind of playing the most uh, kind of part of the time that we were there. But it's really pretty. It's right on the water. Um, it's probably the nicest courts we played at. Yeah, and it's kind of a great way to like bring the community together. And I think we saw that kind of there better than any other park we went to in terms of the amount of people that actually went there for kind of the basketball. So yeah, that kind of yeah. yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, this is Happy Warrior Playground, and uh, I heard about it from my father, who's on his way. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, the gate was closed. There was no entry, and uh, so that was kind of the closest we got. Uh, it is attached to a school, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can see kids playing on it. So we we weren't allowed in because it's just those tools. But I had I heard about the court. It looked nice. <laughs> from afar, and we'll, we'll sure be back. <laughs> this is Carl Shores Park. Um, this is probably one of the most well-known parks in this area, um, just because it's it's sort of, when you're a kid, this is the park that everyone goes to. I know after school, when I was in sixth grade, this would be like the main hangout spot. Um, and I think that Carl Shores Park does its job well of being that for, for the kids in this area. Um, I know most of the kids that are there, they're not there looking to play a serious game of basketball or sort of like get their get their legs moving. They're they're sort of just there to hang out with their friends and so when we went to Carl Shores Park, uh, there were we probably went at noon and there was nobody there except this kid named Jackson who was about two years old playing basketball. Um, he's, so, three. he's three. He's three? You know him. I do. <laughs> so, so Jackson was there getting his, getting his, working on a shot and so um, when we went to Carl Shores Park it was it was more it was clear that the park wasn't there as a, I guess, just like a like cage, as specifically a basketball park, but it was more, uh, it was more a place for the community to sort of get and get it and interact with each other. Um, and so, Carl Schurz Park was maybe not the best basketball, but I think as a, as a congregation ground, it was a, it was a pretty good park. Yeah. We all, we also saw a dribble basketball there, which made us particularly happy because Teddy's the owner of dribble. This slide was more for Teddy. When yeah. Watch. He, he wasn't watching. He wasn't watching. He wasn't watching one of these. But like his reign is expanding, which is exciting. Also, I would add we've been we've been city biking a lot recently, and um, okay. Um, and as we passed it, um, we were we were bike riding in Randall's Island. As we passed it, kind of later in the day, we kind of went earlier. It was like eleven or so, I guess, or something like. As we passed kind of later in the day, they were kind of using it for a lot of different things. Like they were playing like roller hockey there, uh, and like it was way more busy. It was more than six people than when we went. So I think it also just depends on the time of day. In terms of the basketball. <laughs> um, Can you go back to the Happy Warriors live? No. <laughs> this is how I can get We went to Asphalt Green as well. Um, this is kind of probably the like most well known park in terms of the Dalton area. Um, this is Ben's home court. Um, <laughs> uh, when we went, there actually was a camp going on. Um, there was a coach who we kind of spoke with. Um, uh, it was kind of good to see, honestly, that people kind of use courts. Like, I don't even know if they were asshole green affiliated, but that people are kind of like using the courts to actually teach basketball. 
Um, and that kind of, there is actually like developmental things going on as we kind of see in like pickup basketball. Some of the players will kind of have like different skills and kind of different things, but sometimes it's kind of the variation of like actual skill, and actual like teamwork and stuff like that can be kind of wide. So it's kind of nice to see that like people are actually using the courts to kind of teach like legitimate basketball of how it's supposed to be played. So that's kind of one thing we noticed. Yeah. Um, and the last day, or the last couple of days, uh, we were that we were doing the initiative. We wanted to make sure that we got to as many parts as possible. So this was one of the parts that we got to. We didn't necessarily play. Um, we didn't necessarily play that. Um, <laughs> this is this is a picture from a bench. Um, we saw this part a lot of. It, it was not what we were hoping when we got there. It was honestly like mostly used for like slightly older women and men who were just kind of like hanging out, doing their thing, walking their dogs, which is kind of a letdown. That wasn't really what we were expecting. But what? Talk about the MTA. What? Talk about the MTA. Public transportation. Oh, yeah. Wait, did you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, so kind of one underrated thing that we didn't really appreciate um, that kind of happened on this is we kind of got a better grasp of the public transportation system around New York. Uh, we kind of expanded our subway knowledge. <laughs> and from this park, we, we did a race. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, ben and I subwayed around the park down to 34th back up to Dalton and they just took the Crosstown bus at 96 and we raced and they beat us by 35 minutes so yeah. it was close. <laughs> we, we were betting against traffic and, when that took it? Yeah, okay. and so that is this is a picture we went to Southampton to play too yeah this is a picture that we took I like that. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> that's water mill yeah. <laughs> is that a water no no 